So as part of Microsoft's annual build events, there were lots of really cool and interesting announcements. One of them is Microsoft Fabric, which they describe is a unified experience in one platform. But what is it really? In this video, I'm going to try to encapsulate what it is, what's in the package, and how you can get started with it with a free trial today. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So what is it really? Well, in simple terms, just think of it as a product that acts as an umbrella that unifies multiple Microsoft products into one neat package. However, it's not just an umbrella that sort of unifies this into a package, but they also work together and allow you to do more with your Power BI sort of experience. So let's do a bit of a refresh of how a Power BI end-to-end -end solution typically works. So here we have the architecture of basically how a Power BI end-to-end -end solution would work. So you would get your data from your various data sources, your SQLs, your Excel files. You bring this into your Power BI desktop, transform it using Power Query within Power BI desktop. Once you're done, you publish that into the Power BI service where you distribute it to your users, either through the desktop or through the mobile version. And for small scale, or even medium scale solutions, Power BI by itself can already handle the end-to-end -end deployment of sort of getting your data from wherever it is to showing insights to your users. However, as the scale of your requirements change and scale up, this means that certain parts of the Power BI solution that we've just described needs to be offloaded into a different software altogether in order to accommodate for that scale. For example, if you have to deal with big sets of data, for example, putting it and importing them all into your Power BI reports might result in your queries refreshing or taking too long to update. So typically for this, you would set up a separate database and offload that process into that separate database. Now, instead of creating that into a separate app, it's all kind of packaged into this fabric. So you can create it here and offload that process the same way that you would do in the past. Another reason is you might want to take snapshots of your data, for example, which Power BI doesn't natively support. So for that, you can leverage a product called Data Factory, which lets you not just pull data from your sources, but also manipulate them and transform them into what you need, create those snapshots so that your Power BI reports can consume it. Or maybe you just want a central place to sort of manage and just make sure that your data is being handled and processed correctly, which means that you might want to leverage something like Microsoft Purview to do that. So Fabric brings together new and these existing products into this one neat little package that you can just use and scale up your, your deployments. In its current form, at least when it's announced, it's made up of a few components or they call it experiences or personas. So here you can see the components on the top layer of this diagram. You have the data factory, which is the ability to connect to various data sources, either online or on-premises, leveraging the flexibility of the Azure Data Factory and the simplicity of sort of Power Query to get the data wherever it is. You have the data warehousing, which lets you easily create data warehouses to store a single copy of your data that you can uh, use and reuse by your organization. So you don't have to create multiple copies in different silos. And also with Fabric, there's this new uh, mode, the direct lake mode, which which lets you get data quickly and updates your data in real time, which is meant to be a solution for the import or direct query modes that is currently available in Power BI. And I'm really excited to actually just try this one out and see how it actually works. Uh, you have data engineering, which is a way for you to transform large scale data quite easily. A real time analytics, which is dedicated to consuming data in sort of high volume. So think IOTs, uh, where they come in such high volumes and typically they come in sort of non-conventional formats like CSVs or text files. And lastly, we have the Power BI, which as you all know, it lets you create sort of visuals and actionable insights from all the data that you've gathered and processed through Fabric. So as I mentioned before, the majority of these products already exist. Fabric just 
puts them all into this one neat package. So instead of having to create them in separate parts of Azure, you can just have fabric and create those different components through here because it's now treated as sort of a one product. That means that the licensing for this is simplified as well. So instead of having a license for each of these different products as you would before, you can now have a single license for Fabric, which lets you access all of these tools. I just can't say what price is currently at because I don't think that's quite announced yet. So I'll try to cover it in the future um, if they do say what it is. And for me personally, as a sort of a mix of business user and sort of a technical person, it improves the sort of point of entry in which I can start using these and not be confused by all the licensing options that are available to me. So how do you actually get started with Fabric? So what I'm going to show you, I'm going to try to go through it step by step. It's not actually that, uh, that difficult. So we're going to go to my Power BI service, which as you are all familiar at the moment, you need to, it's app.powerbi.com and you'll need to have your own account. And at the moment, as you can see, nothing really has changed. The only thing that's sort of different is this button on the bottom left hand side, which now lets you switch from Power BI to different parts of Fabric. So the different personas or the experiences that we were discussing earlier. Uh, you won't have that by default turned on. Um, you'll need to go to settings. Uh, if you're an admin, tenant admin, for example, you'll be able to have access to the admin portal. And from here, you will have this ability to enable fabric items. It, Microsoft Fabric, you can enable it from here. I've already enabled it. That's why it's already enabled here. But you will have a, a little uh, yellow box here saying that it will be turned on by, by default or at a certain date. So once you've enabled that, you'll be able to access fabric um, and its components here on the bottom left hand side corner. So now you can access fabric either from here, Microsoft Fabric, or you can type app.fabric.microsoft.com, which will take you to Fabric. So once you start and create your first pipeline, for example, in Data Factory, you will have the option to start a free trial, uh, which uh, is given to you for free by Microsoft. So you can get in and try out this new product for yourself. There's lots more about this Microsoft Fabric that I've not really wrapped my head around totally. So I'll slowly cover bits of it in the future for my learning experience as well as for use, because I know like me, most of you will, will be a little bit overwhelmed with all of the announcements that came out recently, especially that a lot of my peers seem to know more about it than, than I do. Uh, so I'll try to cover it and sort of translate it so that uh, you and I can sort of both understand it and, and its uses in the future. And that's really it for this video. Hope you're excited about this product as much as uh, I am. If you want to learn more about Microsoft Fabric and what it does and the other bits that I didn't cover in this video, I'll leave a link to the documentation that that Microsoft posted in the description box below. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.